is going down, y'all? Welcome back to the most underrated sneaker channel on YouTube. Your words, not mine. Today, man. Today, we got a sneaker review for you. But first, last night was money in the bank. And your boy had to cash in on him. Man, no, I'm just playing. But uh, I do got the money in the brief bank briefcase. Actually, if you guys have never seen this, before I break down my thoughts on money in the bank, look at this right here. You got the money in the bank briefcase with the limited edition. Let me just show you guys. You got the limited edition money in the bank pumas that came with this briefcase these dropped a couple years ago these are not actually mine these are my homie alex's i'm really really jealous though so i might just keep them nah i'm just playing but let me uh show you guys these look you got the million dollar belt on the laces right there you got the money on the insole you got the dollar sign with the little puma cut out in leather up on the tongue these are really really fly these are in honor of money in the bank last night great pay-per-view man ww did a great job with this pay-per-view it's probably Throwing WrestleMania out the window, this is probably my favorite pay-per-view of the year. I think they did a really good job. I think the Styles Nakamura match was on point. That might have been my favorite match of the night. The Rollins Drifter match was super underrated. Elias did a great job. Rollins did a great job. I have a little bit of a beef with Braun Strowman winning the briefcase because I just don't think he needs the briefcase, man. For all you guys that are lost and have no idea about wrestling, it's okay. The wrestling fans, I'm talking to you guys. Let me just give a couple quick thoughts before we jump into the shoe that we're going to take a look at today. Number one, I don't think Braun Strowman needs the briefcase man he's already a monster he's already super dominant and the briefcase is kind of a heel thing in my opinion i think the briefcase is definitely better when they give it to one of the heels man one of the bad guys because i feel like it's kind of a bad guy thing to be opportunistic and cash it in on somebody that's unsuspecting or the champion that's unsuspecting it's not really a good guy or a baby face type of move number two my other beef i think they could have done so much better with the roman reigns gender mahal segment obviously roman reigns is getting booed out of every building he walks into. There's a ton of people that just love booing the guy. Maybe they have a reason, maybe they don't have a reason. Whatever it is, he gets booed in every building he goes into. If the WWE really wanted to maybe get some shine on Roman Reigns and have people excited for him to beat up Jinder Mahal, they should have done something cool like play Cult of Personality in Chicago where CM Punk is from. Tell me this, tell me this, picture this. Roman Reigns comes out first, he's standing in the ring. All of a sudden, Cult of Personality hits. You hear everybody just pop and go crazy. In Chicago, thinking CM Punk's coming out. What happens? Jinder Mahal comes out with the microphone, laughs at them, calls them idiots for buying into this, walks over to the guy that plays the music, maybe pays him off, pays him some money, then comes out. Then you got the Chicago crowd kind of like, damn, we want to see this fool get his ass kicked now. Instead, they're booing Roman Reigns out of the building. There's super heat on the baby face. There's no heat on the bad guy, which it should be the opposite. Just throwing something out there to be creative, to switch up the angle. Man, they didn't even be hiring your boy to write for WWE. Where's the right? Can I get a writer job real quick? Can somebody lob me a writer job? Anyway, I digress. Money in the Bank briefcase. Awesome pay-per-view last night. Very, very enjoyable. But let's jump into some sneakers. Let me put this away real quick. All right, here we go. Take a look at the box label. Size 11. These are not my size, but big shout out to the homie Jesse. He got lucky on the sneakers app, was able to get his pair. He's nice enough to let us take a look. There you go. You've got the receipt Air Jordan 4 from Nike there. A lot to discuss on this pair, man. So before we get into these, you know, we got to hit you with the bang. There we are. Look around the shoe. If you don't know by now, the Travis Scott Air Jordan 4 or the Cactus Jack Jordan 4, whatever you want to call them. Houston Oilers Jordan 4. I've heard a bunch of names for them. Whew, these, these, these. Where do we even start with these joints, man? Let's actually, uh, let's start off talking about the price on these, man. These retailed for 225. I saw them upwards of six, 700 when they first dropped. And resale has tanked on these down to the $350 range. I'm not exactly sure why, but I think I can guess just by taking a look at this pair, by taking a look at some of the other pairs that I've seen people on Instagram and different social medias get. Quality control was an issue for Jordan Brand on these, man. Heavy, heavy issue. And I'm gonna tell you why. This pair is actually in decent shape. It doesn't look as bad as some of the other pairs that I saw on the internet but uh, they're still not great, and we'll jump into that in a second. I think the resale value will go back up on these, but quality control really screwed the resale value on these. They are still super limited, but if I didn't get these from the homie Jesse with the Nike receipt, and if I didn't know Jesse like I know Jesse, and this was just some schmo selling me these in the middle of a parking lot, uh, I wouldn't cop. There's some glue stains, some heavy glue stains on the shoe. They are, uh, they just look, I don't know, they look a little sus, bruh. All right, so let's jump right into it. So as we go around the toe box there, you see some glue stains, some glue splatter, if you will, up from the sole where everything was kind of glued together. Little bit of a rough cut around the toe there. 
kind of, I don't know, nothing major, but it kind of bugs me that it's just cut out a little bit rough, especially when the shoe's supposed to be limited, especially when you're paying $225 for the shoe. You have some fraying of some strings in different spots, and that's kind of standard. You can get that on any Jordan release. But on the right shoe, you do have some paint splatter, some of the blue paint, paint splattered up onto the white here. The whole irony of that is there actually is paint splatter all over the shoe. I mean, it's supposed to be like that. It's definitely not supposed to be up there. But nonetheless, a little bit more glue issues there. The leather, very jagged or rough cut around some of the edges. Now, besides the flaws on this shoe, I actually really loved this shoe. This is definitely a shoe I wanted. I do still want it. My only problem is when paying resale through StockX or Goat or something like that, which pair am I gonna get? Am I gonna get a super flawed pair? Am I gonna get a pair that's in good condition? So that's one thing that gives me pause when buying the shoe. Material wise, it is suede all the way around. It's not like that long haired or really nice uh, suede that we've been getting on the past few releases. I mean, the suede on the cool gray Jordan 11 lows is actually better quality than this. Damn, I feel like I'm really shitting on the shoe and I'm not meaning to. I really do like the shoe, man. I wanted to love the shoe, to be honest with you. I love the blue, the red. These are one of my favorite all time uh, color combos, man. A baby blue and the red are fire together. Like, I really love that. I don't want to be that guy that's just saying these are terrible, but they're not terrible. I should take that back. They're not terrible. They just have some flaws. They're a shoe only a mother could love. As we move up the side, you do see the Jumpman. It says Cactus Jack on there with the Jumpman hang tag, classic Jordan 4 hang tag. I do like that this is cut out of the same suede or nubuck material. That actually is pretty nice. That might be the nicest piece of the whole shoe, to be honest with you. Moving back to the lacing system, it does have the splattered paint on it. Like I said before, it is splattered baby blue, and you get that kind of throughout the whole lacing system there. You get the black wax laces with it. There aren't any extra laces or anything like that. Moving around to the back, you have the same Cactus Jack logo that you have on the hang tag there. And then on the back of the other shoe, it just has the red Jumpman. I know we all would have wished for Nike Air on that, but they went with the Jumpman on this pair. I'm not too bothered by it. That definitely doesn't bother me. It's not one of the reasons where I'm like, oh man, this shoe sucks. You know what I mean? Like, I don't care too much about the Jumpman. Moving up to the tongue, classic Jordan 4 tongue there. On the back side, this one does say Travis Scott upside down there, and then this one says Air Jordan. I do like the switch up there. I like how this one's blue. I like how this one's white. I do like the Travis Scott Air Jordan. That's really, really dope to me. Moving down to the midsole, this is where I did see a lot of people had issues on the midsole. Some of this paint was overlapping here. Actually, I did see a dude that had black paint up on his suede somehow. I don't even know how that happened. He sent me a picture on Instagram and I was kind of blown away by that. I'm glad that uh, the homie Jesse didn't get that on his pair. All things considered, I mean, this pair is actually in good condition. The flaws that are on this pair are pretty minor. I mean, there's some glue stains, some loose stitching, some rough cuts, but other than that, it's better than it could have been. Moving down to the midsole, two-tone, you've got the black midsole overlapping with the white and the baby blue there. Classic Jordan air bubble. Jordan 4 bottom there. This is like a milky white or like a translucent milky white right here. It's kind of hard to see that on camera, but it definitely is that like translucent kind of white there. That is about all on this pair, man. There's not really a ton to say other than show you guys the little details, some of the stuff they switched up. It is all classic Jordan 4, other than the collaboration with rapper Travis Scott. I've seen rumored that they're going to come out with maybe like a tan pair. Some people were talking about a purple pair that's dropping. Now they're saying that pair is only friends and family. I'm not sure about the tan pair. I'm not sure if they're dropping or not, but hopefully they're a little bit better quality. Hopefully they don't feel as rushed as these ones were, man. The concept on these joints was great. The execution was just poor, man. And for that reason, I think I might have to pass on these. Unless I see them at a sneaker con or I see them in person somewhere and I can see that I got a really dope pair, size 12 in my size, and I get a good price on them, then I'll cop. And that's a lot of ifs right there, man. That's a lot of ifs to be able to cop a sneaker. But this was a pair I was really, really looking forward to. Honestly, I was probably looking forward to these right below the Michigan 12s that are coming out later this month. You know, I gotta have those go blue. I'm really looking forward to those Michigan 12s. I'm hoping they're as good a quality as the PSNYs that dropped. They dropped a few different colorways in those, the wheats, the olives, the grays. Those were all good quality. I'm hoping that the Michigan 12s are the same quality. Oh, I almost forgot the voting for the radio show. You guys will be able to vote all this week. It's live on the website right now. The link is down below in the description. Please vote for your boy. You can vote once a day if you want to. So I'll post the link in the description 
description. All you got to do is go in there, vote. Again, this is for my opportunity to make the top three to get a sports talk radio job at the biggest sports talk station here in Denver, Colorado. I know you guys always support me. I'm not really that worried about it. I really appreciate everybody that's going and voting for me, man. So thank you guys so much. When you go on the website, there'll be like little promo videos for each person. Um, mine will be at the bottom because it's alphabetical order. So you can click on that. You can watch the little video if you want to. Basically, it's a video of me just talking about where I'm from, who my favorite Denver sports athlete. They had a few little predetermined questions that you had to answer. And then it's also the audio from the three minute audition that I had with Cecil Lammy, who was the host that I hosted with that day. He's a current host on the radio station. So him and I just did a little three minute back and forth. You could choose your topic. It had to be a Denver sports topic. So you can go ahead and check that out if you want. You can just vote if you want. Whatever you guys want to do, man, it'll all be up there on the website. Other than that, that's about all for this video, man. Let me know if you guys have any other questions. Let me know, did your pairs turn out good? Did they turn out crappy? Let me know in the comments below. You can always hit me up on all the socials. As always, thank you guys for supporting everything I do. I love the shit out of y'all, and I will see you fools tomorrow. Six shots. Gussing at the bend, though. A nigga jury real metal like a piano. I went from rag to riches to a feature with tip. I went from smart car to a bitch with some smart looks. And that